Welcome to this video overview of finding scholarly sources about literature in Literary Reference Center. I'm Jenny Dale, your English librarian at UNCG, and let's get started. This is a library database, meaning that it is a searchable collection of information. And in this case, it is mostly a searchable collection of articles, book chapters, and similar kinds of things that relate to literary topics. So I'm gonna start with the yellow wallpaper as a search, that's something that y'all have read recently as I'm filming this. Um, and so as I look here, I've got 74 results that have come up. I see um, this one looks like it is a short story review of the yellow wallpaper. Um, this actually looks like it's the story itself. Here's something from a resource called Master Plots. I wanna point this out because um, this says it's a work analysis, but it's really just a summary. So when you see things from master plots here in Literary Reference Center, which you'll see quite a bit, um, note that that's not something that you're going to want to use as a scholarly source. It's really just a summary. It's not going to be telling you anything that you don't already know from actually reading the text itself. Although, if you look at the subjects here, this can help you sort of brainstorm some ideas for um, you know, different themes or different topics related to this text that you might want to explore. So Cyclopedia of Literary Characters, I'm seeing that here as well, same kind of thing. It's really just basically a list of the characters in this text and a description of them. But now I'm seeing um, a scholarly article or an academic journal article right here about a film adaptation of this. Here's another one from Master Plots. I'm seeing It Gets Better, A Short History of Feminism, Body Policing, and Women's Suicide. Looks like it talks about the yellow wallpaper and Kate Chopin's The Awakening. So there's really quite a bit of different, um, quite a few different topics related to this uh, text that are covered here. I'm actually seeing a couple that look like they're related to like architecture, which is interesting. Um, but maybe I find something that I want to use, um, and I'm not totally sure if it's going to be considered a scholarly source or not. So what I would do at this point, I'm scrolling all the way back up, and I'm going to make use of their source types limiters. I'm going to click this show more here. So you can see they have a lot of different source types here. And so what I typically do, because I don't want the story itself, I don't want... Um, reference books like that Cyclopedia of Literary Characters. I don't want plot summaries. So I'm gonna choose two things. I'm gonna choose academic journals, and then I'm gonna choose literary criticism. And for me, this is usually um, one of the best ways to get to some of the stuff that I will really be able to find useful for my literary analysis. Be careful though, master plots still shows up. So again, just because you've used these limiters, um, doesn't mean that everything here is fair game. You want to take a look at it and see if it's really something that's going to fulfill those sort of characteristics of scholarly sources that we talked about in the last page of this module. All right, let's see. There is a lot of interesting looking stuff. Um, okay, I, I like reading, so maybe I'll take a look at this. The Reading Habit and the Yellow Wallpaper. So I clicked on the title to get more detailed information so I can see this is from author Barbara Hockman. It is from a publication called American Literature. I'm going to show you a quick tip here. If I left click on that link to American Literature, slowly, it will tell me whether or not this publication is considered peer reviewed. So I mentioned peer review on our last module page. So just there you go. This one is peer reviewed. And I can also see a little abstract, something that gives me the scent, uh, gives me a sense of what I can expect to find here. So if I decide by looking at that abstract that this does sound like something that I want to access in terms of full text, I am going to click this check for full text link right here to see if this is something that we have. And it looks like we actually have it in multiple places. So I'm going to just click on the first one that says view full text. And now here it is, The Reading Habit and the Yellow Wallpaper, and I can click this Download PDF. I usually prefer to get the PDF if possible. I guess I need to accept these cookies um, because it's a lot easier to cite from a PDF, especially if you're going to be quoting. 
So this is definitely going to be a scholarly source. We already know it's from a peer-reviewed publication because we checked. We see citations throughout, both citations from the yellow wallpaper itself, um, and also some citations to other scholars, like here's an example um, of a scholar named Judith Fetterly being cited. So definitely something that is going to be considered a scholarly source. Now, if I decide that I want to keep this source, like if I want to get back to it later, I can definitely download it to my computer. But what I usually recommend is using this email button right here. And this works in all of our databases that look like this. Um, so we have, I think, over 100 from the same company called EBSCO. They're just each a little bit different um, in terms of what they cover. But they all have these same functions. So I'm going to use this email function and I'm going to email this article to myself and I'm going to call it um, yellow wallpaper article um, and I'm going to ask it to send me an MLA citation for this article as well. And I'm going to hit send and what that's going to give me is this article, a link back here that's going to be a permalink and then that citation that I asked for, which is probably not going to be a perfect MLA citation, but it'll be like pretty good. So I'm just going to click continue here. And then I'm going to also show you if you're not super into um, emailing yourself, if you don't want, you know, to clutter up your inbox. The other option you have here is to click this permalink. I point this out because the link that is up here, which is, you know, if I were just looking at a regular old article online, I would just save the link up here or I would bookmark it. But with our library databases, because they require a login, you are going to want to get a permalink because this link will expire. You may also, it looks like this is probably also a permalink as well to the actual PDF. So let's say that I want to create a new Google Doc. And it is going to be my uh, yellow wallpaper sources. I can um, get both of those and get the permalink from Literary Reference Center. Oops, I don't want to paste that in the title. Not what I was trying to do. That is actually not the permalink that I wanted either. All right, let's try this one more time. Here's my permalink. Um, so let me clean that out. And I can tell the difference from lots of years of practice, but also by seeing this web-b-ebscohost right here, you want it to have this login.libproxy.uncg.edu. And so that's the link to the article, which I can use once again to get the full text. And I can also just try to save this link to the full text itself right there with my source. So that's another option for keeping track of your sources. Whatever works for you that's going to help you get back to these sources, it is A-OK. -okay. okay, so I've shown you this one. One of the things I will actually show you while we're here is one of these examples of something that's listed as literary criticism, but is actually part of a book. So I'm going to click on this one. It gets better, which we have come across in our search. Um, and this is similar in terms of the setup abstract is here, um, but the difference is that the PDF is actually included within this literature uh, literary reference center, um, and so I can actually look at the article itself. And once again, you know, I'm seeing um, citations throughout the article from uh, scholars as well as from literary texts, so this might be something that I want to use, and I can do the same things here. I can email it to myself, I can uh, grab a permalink. So I'll go ahead and grab this permalink just to show you once again how this works. And then I'm going to toss that uh, right here into my Google Doc. So that's Literary Reference Center. And if you have any questions about using this or any other library databases, please feel free to contact me, Jenny Dale, as your English librarian or you can use the Ask Us chat service by heading to library.uncg.edu and clicking chat with a librarian. Good luck with your research.